recording. I had a visit from Archangel Raquel. I'm not I familiar with Raquel. I didn't even know who he was. Oh, wow. So that's new and exciting. Um, tell me more. Raphael, but... No. Nope. Tell me more. Yeah. What about Raquel? Interesting. Cats are interested. Dogs are interested. Tell me more about Raquel. Almost. Birds are here. Alish, can you hear me? Well, I keep working on my ability to channel. But, Am I muted? Uh, oh, I'm muted. Okay. Slow process. <laughs> I sure. see. Not sure why. I've also been working a lot on um, chakra, chakra uh, meditations and and whirling a lot of whirling, which has been really good. But uh, fun stuff. I see. All right, starting now. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. <clears throat> Hello, today is July 6th, 2017, and I have my usual Thursday night, uh, Max speaking for myself, Max speaking for himself. Um, I would like to integrate the channeling and myself so I can be as high and speak for myself. Let's see how it goes. It's uh, it's uh, an integration process. Thank you all for joining. I have with me Tad, Alicia, Christine. Thank you for joining. And um, the topic of today is what to do individually and collectively, what to do after the contact, what to do after the disclosure, what to do after the big shake, big shift. So how it is going to happen, I don't think anybody knows, except those who are planning it. Maybe they have some idea. But I think when they're planning it, they also have plan A, plan B, C, D, depending on how it goes. Uh, my experience was living through the shift in Soviet Union in early 90s, where the Soviet Union fell apart and the whole country, lots of people, I think it was counted at that time, 200 something million, I don't remember, I think 100, 260 million, is it right? Yeah, quarter billion. There was a big shift in consciousness, there was big awake, awake a series of big awakenings. And um, so that was a huge experience. It, I was at that time, I, I was born 64. So by 86, I was, is it 22? 64, 86, 22, I was 22. And by 96, I was 32. And that's when I moved to America. So from 22 to 32, the defining experience, I had two kids, so I made it, had two kids and at that time, the whole system fell apart. So, I wish we knew what to do. So, I, now I want to prepare in advance. And I want you to prepare in advance. And I want that to become a major topic of discussion. What do we do after the system starts shifting? Because what is happening now is kind of predetermined. The We are being squeezed. That's... The image of Bashar, like you squeeze the grape seed in your fingers, you squeeze it tighter, tighter, and tighter until it shoots out, right? So we are being squeezed tighter, tighter, and tighter, and then nobody knows in which direction we will shoot out individually and collectively. So if you have some sort of a plan, when the time comes, that plan might help. So, how urgent it is going to be? My experience in 80s and 90s was it wasn't that urgent. There was a couple moments when you had to decide things on the fly, like in minutes and hours. But 
for the rest of the time, you had weeks and months and years to decide. Like decide, you know, where you move away. Where, you know, decide where you go to America. Like for me, it was a big decision. Do you go to Israel, America, or any other country? Um, so moving is a huge decision, right? And for you, it might be the decision, are you going to stay? Are you going to stay with the humanity? Or are you going to shift to another dimension, to Terra Hall, for example? Say they come to you, that's serious, right? And say, you have so much time, like three hours, 24 hours, three weeks, three months, three years, but you have to decide, are you going with us or you stay? We can pick you up on a ship, we can give you a red pill, or we can uh, come down holographically, plug you into our machine and transmit you to another dimension. But are you going to stay with the old humanity or are you going to, are you going to move to another dimension? And I made this choice, uh, when it was it? That's a story which I always tell. Uh, it was, oh, I think it's four years ago. Four years ago, 2014, 13, 13. So exactly that time, a nice, nice synchronicity. Exactly that time, the June of 13, I started speaking with uh, this dude and his friends, Takura, I think, Around that time, Takur joined. I still have the files of the, of the recordings. At that time, I recorded audio only. And um, I wasn't sure what is happening. But a huge move was first move. They, first, they started speaking. And I say, I apply for a visit. But it was only a visit at that time. But then I realized they have no clue what they, what they are doing. They um, was so much misunderstanding the humanity. So... I realized there is an opportunity to talk to them and explain what we are. So I started making a plan that I move over there and work with them, explaining how we are. So basically shift my emigrate again. First time from Russia to America in 96. Now in 2013, I wanted to go with them and just join them up there doing the work. I knew there are some humans working there, but Apparently, it's not enough, not sufficient number, not sufficient um, level of interaction. So I was thinking about that. But my decision was I, I, I can move only with my family. And because my family needs a community, I would need we would need to move more than four people. We would need to move, uh, you know, create a community up there. So I, I made a decision. Yes, I'm, I'm ready to move and not ever to return, or maybe return for a short time. And uh, it didn't happen, apparently, I'm still here. And my feeling, pretty strong intuitive feeling that uh, I'm going to stay here no matter what. It, it looks like the plan for me is to, to be here. I, I, would be, I would be pleased to be surprised So if they allow me finally to shift there and work on the other side. But it looks like they want me here to play down down on the ground. So for you, it's also, you already applied for a visit, but now like think about when the shift comes, where do you want to end up? So some humans possibly will be transported, teleported to another dimension or maybe to another half dimension, but to another place. And some will remain here. So that's one thing. Next, simpler, simpler solution, yeah, somewhat simpler, or on the other hand, it's much harder, you know. If you are going to move within the, on Earth, maybe you need to relocate just for a temporary period. Can you move just to survive or another, or maybe there will be an opportunity. Can you move for an opportunity? I feel, and I have some glimpses that there will be lots of opportunities. Like, people would say, let's move now and start a commune, a colony on Earth with light workers together. And usually it is a disaster, right? It's, you know, how many communes survived, right? In, in the 60s, they created communes and 
if the community has a strong leadership, then it lasts until the leadership becomes rotten and then it falls apart. Or if it has a good sponsor, <laughs> then it... So there is a spiritual life, there is a social life, there is financial life. All of this have to be balanced. And in most cases, uh, people are too idealistic thinking about that. How about we drop the money, everybody will work volunteer voluntarily and uh, and contribute equally. And that just doesn't happen. There is a human nature and, and deception, right? So hopefully, when the time comes, that's really serious. When the time comes, there will be some solution for that. We need communes, we need people to cooperate without being exploited by each other. But the current human state of culture, state of vibration, state of altruistic movement doesn't allow people to cooperate freely. I mean, when you drop the money, usually it's a complete disaster. So hopefully there will be new level of consciousness. Maybe we will shift up and we'll become telepathic and shift into the heart space where we care about it, but care and are kind about each other. Maybe that will be natural shift in, in the vibration. Maybe it will be guidance by alien telepaths who can see through people, like Takur, she, she's really good seeing through people. Some other information of Takur I find less reliable, but when I ask her about her or other aliens, about the relationships, it's it's usually 99% correct. They can be wrong about many things, but the relationship, psychological, spiritual relationship with other people, with, all, with other people, they're extremely wise. And uh, if you get a guidance, like each commune might have, how do you call it, a, a guide, a, an advisor, an advisor, not necessarily even full full time advisor, some sort of spiritual advisor who is of higher spiritual vibration. That that uh, that might work. Uh, the the earth communes are monasteries. From ancient time, there are monasteries that people build a monastery surrounded with a wall. There is certain membership in the monastery. You become a monk, and you have to obey and follow the rules in the monastery. And then they kind of clone each other, clone clone themselves. They send another group of missionaries and create another mission, another monastery. And so this art in different cultures, especially in Christianity, is, uh, is really well developed. Now it's somewhat forgotten, but it's still, it's still available. The culture of cloning, reproducing, the, the commune. Another culture is kibbutzes. Kibbutz is a Jewish, Israeli agricultural commune of uh, self-sustaining types sometimes, and often it's subsidized by the government, but still they're very profitable in a way that people are supposed to work together and they do work together. So the commune usually is run by a collective decision, collective quite democratic, somewhat democratic process. Uh, another cloning structure is franchises like um, you know, Applebee's franchise or um, McDonald's franchise or my favorite is Panda Express franchise, right? Subway franchise. What is franchise is they don't necessarily copy and fund everything, some restaurant might want just to take on itself their franchise, the other franchise. So you own an owner of restaurant and your business doesn't go well. And you think, you invite the investor, say, invest in me like so many thousands of dollars and I'll become a franchise of Panda Express. So Panda comes to you, says, we need that, 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 and that. And then 
train you, we'll train you, we might even invest in you, and then they teach you how to run the business according to their criteria. And just because they put their name there, people expect certain quality and your business starts spinning. And uh, the same happens with, uh, your, sometimes happens with European Union franchise. So European Union franchise says, okay, that country, Bulgaria, you have to make that, that, and that economic changes. It's change the rules and change the practices and then we'll we'll accept you for, for as a as a um, European Union country same maybe will be with aliens when the aliens come and say earth if you do that that and that <laughs> abolish slavery transform your economy you know become peaceful we will accept you in a galactic union I don't know galactic federation or some other galactic association i'm pretty sure that will happen and i'm pretty sure the humans will be humanity will be divided strongly some will say yay some will say how do you say it in english no right thank you will be what's that word uh when you're independent and there is that nice word for self-governing that is a nice word for that i forgot sovereign sovereign yes we want to be sovereign. When I hear the word sovereign relative to aliens, I, I really don't like it. I don't feel, I don't trust my, my brother, sister humans to be sovereign. So far, it, it has been pretty unsuccessful. And especially the elections in the Russian elections, American elections show that, you know, possibly I don't want to trust the, the majority. It's nice to have collective, collective government, but democratic sort of process, but if you rely on the majority, the majority is so backward and uh, brainwashed, you don't really want to trust it. So I, I, I want to trust it, but I, I don't think it's, it's smart. All right. So what, what we discussed so far, the type of change, it could be a war that starts at a domino effect. It could be a, a natural disaster, it could be artificial disaster, artificial natural disaster, it could be uh, a bank closure, like the finances, just financial reform unrolled. It can be uh, uh, some sort of peaceful conflict or something. I mean, peaceful without weapon weapons, uh, sort of Cold War conflict, right? Um, it can be anything like it can be actually disclosures that started which is very unlikely i think disclosure will follow there will be some series of events and then disclosure will be plugged in when nobody really cares about it that's my understanding so if you do a disclosure meaning if the politicians disclose the aliens right now it might cause a big upheaval a big surprise everybody will be talking about it and I don't think anybody up there in the government likes that idea. So I think first there will be shake up of other type. And then when people are completely absorbed in their financial trouble, then the disclosure can be unraveled without doing any big damage. Basically, it will be just another news. And somebody will care about it and some of you will say it's, no, it's a secondary type of news we don't really care about it we care more about the finances and war and other things rather than and food and politics rather than about the elite so my prediction is i mean just just guess my guess is that the disclosure will follow the first series of domino dominoes so first dominoes will fall and then the disclosure will be plugged in and also possibly will be stepwise and Right now, there is some sort of damaged, but trust. There is half trust, I would say. People still listen to what is said from above. Still listen to what is said by the mass media. But when the dominoes, when the shift starts, when the domino starts falling, I expect that there will be so much deception and contradictory 
uh, news from the media that people will just lose complete completely lose tr the masses will lose trust in the media that's what happened in uh, in Soviet Union in uh, 1986 when the Chernobyl nuclear disaster happened uh, the mass media was completely poorly trying to cover it it was a cover-up it was like Watergate cover-up or something uh, pre-Watergate cover-up so um, that's where uh, there was a complete loss in uh, loss of trust in in the Soviet government and that what caused final shake up and a and few years later it, fe it fell so that's what usually happens and that happened in uh, if you look at other fallen empires like German Empire before uh, like after the fir first world war fell apart and there was a lot of other European countries that just the people lose trust and uh, in the government and the government falls just because um, nobody supports it anymore okay um so when the disclosure happens your voice will be important i guess that's my main message today when the disclosure happens your voice will be important there is a nice book by richard dolan it's called I think it's called The Day After Disclosure by Richard Dolan and it was written about I think 2011-2012 I think that's the right time no I'm wrong maybe just a little bit early around 2012 The Day After Disclosure so there he and his co-author um, just hypothesize what will happen and describe it in wonderful in interesting colors how in vivid colors how it will happen they kind of make it a little more dramatic they expect that the disclosure happens as an independent event not following other events so if it is in modern kind of more or less familiar environment the disclosure will cause a huge response right and it will cause uh, uh, certain secrets of the government would would have to come out because you know they disclose things and people start start ask questions and uh, trust actually more understand more and trust more what comes out in, in terms of disclosure and then um if people realize that the aliens are real right if the mainstream people realize that the aliens are real there is a lot of questions which you already know the answers for which you know the answers you know, like what the what's the agenda which aliens are there what's their agenda what's their why why do I, why are they here why didn't they show up first and um, how to deal with them who are they are they you know are they scary are they um, biologic biologically compatible and so on so i think it is important to prepare for that and um, have the answers ready So my initial prediction was that the internet will stop working, we'll have uh, the earth in the dark, no electricity. And uh, I asked that question if, if it is going to be like that. And typically the answers are that no, most likely we'll have electricity, still internet will be working, the cell phone will be working. So maybe we'll have a few dark days without electricity but then things will be restored because it's not that difficult to fix the um, the technology it's not that expensive though either it's not that expensive to fix the technology so if that is working then i think hopefully the youtube will be working or, or some other substitute for youtube will be working and then um you could broadcast your answers you could become uh, a broadcaster that for me it is i think is that's what we are doing now broadcasting right we are asking questions giving answers and uh, analyzing answers i think that's 
as we do it now, I think we should continue that then. After the shift, hopefully our voice will be heard and hopefully there will be an opportunity to influence the situation just by teaching. So in Soviet Union, again, I'm, I'm relying on my Soviet Union experience. The uh, When the shift happened, there was a huge silence. People just didn't know what to say. Like there was like quiet, quiet, quiet. People really didn't know what to say. People didn't know, they really wanted to learn. And there was a lot of readiness to learn, but very little information came our way. And then when information started to come out, there were just a few people who were able to say something meaningful. And the voices of those people became really loud. They were multiplied. At that time, it was mostly journals, like weekly magazines, weekly magazines, which made the main influence. And there was uh, a couple of just two radio stations which had something to say. Others just didn't, couldn't say anything relevant and they were irrelevant, right? There were a couple of radio stations that had something to say. One was just a new one, independent radio station, which somehow balanced on the borderline of being legal, but delivering the most truthful answers. And another radio station was actually a foreign radio station made by, financed by Americans. At that time they were in Prague. Uh, they were called Radio Liberty, Radio Svoboda, and they spoke in Russian and actually uh, employed Russian immigrants, 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 who could speak and could think and could relate to us. So I think, and, and those, yeah, and those transmissions were absolutely essential. People who understood the situation were the ones who were actually relevant in the situation. And to understand the situation, you had to listen to those radio stations and not to read these weekly magazines. Now it's more like YouTube and uh, and blogs, but the same situation. It's uh, only a few people really are up to date in the alien developments and uh, the information is exceptionally valuable. So when the, the change happens, the information is the key. The information transforms, the information uh, is the key for transformation. Information is the key for transformation. People would ask the questions and they would listen with, with great attention. They will be ready to shift if they get what, what they understand. Of course, there will be some noise, which is nonsense, but I think by itself we will be there. The light workers will be influential. Uh, they will be invited to speak to large audiences, like on television channels and so on. Like David Wilcock was already invited, so um, Stephen Greer, and there are several others who are really knowledgeable. Uh, Kerry Cassidy and her and her circle. Uh, and also, I think, uh, in addition to being invited by their human mainstream, I think there will be a, an opportunity to speak from the alien radio stations. Um, how they, how could they broadcast? You can only like, watch science, science fiction videos. I think alien technologies are so advanced they can broadcast in many possible ways. They can broadcast on, tele, on human television sets, they can broadcast on a wall near to the television set. They can broadcast in the middle of the room. They can broadcast right into the minds of people. Um, they can broadcast 
through channelers <laughs> as they do now um, they can just broadcast through multi-dimensional holograms but I invite them to broadcast in the most benign way not to demonstrate their power but the other way around just to buy some time on uh, mainstream and uh, just go on the schedule go on the schedule just buy time and you know let's buy some time and uh, and uh, again broadcast through humans the information that they have to deliver they are delivered could be delivered through them or through earth humans or through outer outer humans there is I don't know how many, but the estimates are that there are about thousands to millions outer humans ready to come down when we are ready. They are in different groups. Uh, some of them are called uh, runaway civilization. Some of them are working with our alien friends. But I believe there are thousands to millions, maybe a few millions of outer humans who were born here and emigrated up there to be ready to come down when a shift happens. Shift happens. So with those technologies, I think we should buy the time on television and speak. Um, what do we speak about? I mean, the main questions is uh, alien agenda, which aliens to trust, which aliens not to trust. The true Earth history, which is possibly is uh, some of it is not known even to them, but some of that is known to them. So, what they really can get from the aliens could be broadcasted. It would be great to take just interviews of the aliens, so the humans could interview the aliens, and that would be most revealing. Just to teach the Earth, to teach the mainstream Earth. That there is a poss there is a possible peaceful relationship between a human, Earth human, and an alien. That they can touch each other, which I'm not sure. Some aliens you cannot touch, like like ashes of the civilization, which I don't think you're supposed to touch unless they're in a, in a space suit. It might be invisible, but I think they're poisonous to us. They breathe something something quite poisonous to us, and um, I think their blood chem skin chemistry is also not very good for us but other aliens like human human aliens from Pleiades from Orion from Sirius from uh, Yael civilization and Pleiades um, and others and uh, Andromedans yeah these are just looking like humans and can be related in a very normal way so if we show that the aliens can be nice, are nice, that many of them are very innocent and loving, if that is shown in interviews hour after hour, people will watch that and uh, people will start to understand. I, I wish, yeah, I, I can see that happening. I can see that happening. So interviews first. Interviews, broadcasts, announcements. I think that's what should be done. If the aliens cooperate, if they don't, then uh, we will have to speak for ourselves from what we know. But I hope that they will cooperate and give us some information, allow us to interview them and broadcast. And the next step is for them to come down, right? Uh, aliens coming down. So my main understanding is that, you know, they have to be in, in a safe environment where people would... Uh, would communicate with them positively. So this would be some environments where uh, where there is uh, limited access and more or less uh, security, high security. So obviously this could be military bases with a friendly military, alien friendly military, right? Um, some White House, Kremlin, other government places. I don't know how safe they are, but possibly. At least there is security there, right? Um, hospitals, Western hospitals, I think they're pretty well guarded. Schools. And then uh, universities, 
I think universities are the best place for the aliens to work together with humans. And this could be cultural exchanges and uh, medical exchanges, medical help from them, and teaching humans to do medicine in an alien way. And maybe through, I'm not sure they're ready to give us lots of technologies, but they can give us culture, they can give us history, culture, and uh, they would be happy, many aliens would be happy to study us and just to practice living with us, practice the Earth stuff, the Earth uh, routines. And uh, so cultural exchange, I think, would be great. And also sending humans out there for cultural exchange would be also great. And um, they say, I guess, switching to the next topic, they say that there is a surprise for us, and that's real surprise. I still don't know what it is. Uh, they say that they have a surprise in terms of economy. I think the outer humans, those thousands of millions of humans out there, they have some sort of a plan how to transform our economy. That's what I heard several times, I asked several times, and that's the answer I got. They have some sort of a magic new economic system, which I don't know what it is. I could imagine it could be something like a conscious economy where the money are consciously dealt with by some sort of superhuman entity or group or I don't know what it is, L, L collective or some other system where you're uh, where the money is or the, the resources are distributed more fairly than they are doing now. More fair distribution of resources. So again, coming back to my Soviet experience and Soviet history, there was plenty of opportunities for the Soviets for the Russia to experiment with the communist idea of distribution of equal distribution of resources or fair distribution of resources. And they tried lots of things. And I saw with first hand so how lots of experiments of fair distribution of resources failed pretty badly badly. So when there is a communist system with the idea of fair distribution of resources and the capitalist system with the uh, uh, competition and free market, at least a certain level of consciousness, like low level of consciousness, that sort of communist system fails miserably and uh, capitalist system wins. And uh, until we reach the telepathic state, I don't think the, capital, uh, the communist system will work. But if we reach the telepathic state where we kind of unite in love, then again, it's possible. Uh, just uh, sharing, sharing and not taking more than is fair, is possible when there is a collective sort of hive consciousness. But until then, there should be some system which would allow individuals to have the resources, but not to have more than is fair. And fair, I mean, practically, practical for the collective, practical for the collective. One of the first questions when I spoke to uh, this do was how how do you get your funding for your for your projects like this do was a scientist is a scientist and uh, how do you get funding the resources and he said as any scientist would say here I get my funding because my research is absolutely necessary <laughs> right but uh, when I started kind of investigating a little more like, how do you get funding? They say the, most of these cultures, they don't use money. They use resources and resources are given to them because the collective thinks what they do is important and just give them the resources. There is a certain system of accounts in there, but it's not, it's not a free trade of money. It's something else. And uh, researching that and choosing the models, basically, the galactic models of economy would be absolutely essential. So I hope the outer humans, they research that and they have a good understanding of what it is. 
I'm sure many, what's the number, trillions, gazillions of alien cultures, they have all kinds of economies and we need to find the one which suits the humanity. Uh, possibly there will be pockets. I'm sure there will be pockets of new economy, old economy, no economy, and uh, complete disaster, and uh, different experiments on Earth. That's how Earth usually develops. That what happened in Russia in, uh, in uh, I think it was 1990, plus minus half a year. 1990, the economy just collapsed. And with the collapse of the economy, all the restrictions were lifted as well. So when there is no money, I mean, no flow of economy, no economic flow, then uh, everything becomes possible. Like people just come on the streets. And I was very positively surprised. I think it was maybe a little later, maybe 1991, that first breath of the freedom free market which was like real free market like people just come on the street and exchange that was how it was come on the street and exchange because you need the food you need necessities so you come out bring out what you have and and others bring what they have and they exchange so it was like completely free market there was no police because police didn't have the russian police didn't have the salary so they just didn't have a job so they were trading as well and they didn't have guns, I think, or the guns weren't a factor at the moment. So there was a market on each corner, on each, uh, how do you call it, uh, open area, convenient area. There was a lot of selling and economy was quickly rebuilding itself because when there is no restrictions, people are capable of building, bringing, trading, rebuilding economy really fast. There was a huge explosion of economy when there was no restrictions. It was it was happening maybe for half a year, a year, and then the crime started being organized and we got like Chicago situation, Chicago of 40s, 30s, I guess, Chicago 30, like real uh, nasty racketeering, it's called racketeering, when uh, people start uh, just take money from business people for uh, because they have weapons and um, can kill anyone right but before that before the criminals took over the economy the economy rebuilt itself really fast and of course different people were absolutely different and there some were very slow some were very entrepreneurial but that entrepreneurship like really exploded and there was people who were growing stuff and what was interesting people who grew stuff like the, the the food and uh, other stuff, they started growing flowers. Even in that time of complete breakage of economy, complete destruction, flowers were still popular. There were still desire to live pretty, the desire to love, and um, and romance was in the air, and. Um, there were islands of prosperity with an islands of um, poverty. So it was really islands. You can move from Moscow, just drive somewhere, or I think at that time we didn't drive. It just took public transportation away. And you can visit the old Soviet Union where the economy was still there. And in other places where the economy was completely destroyed and there was no life or no noticeable life. So the islands, my message is that you move away, move around, there are islands of different um, activities. And there was an opportunities, random, not rare opportunities, like one of my uh, most admired couple of people, uh, their husband and wife, uh, he's a composer and a popular singer of, I guess, Bob Dylan type of songs. And his wife also, they, they, they seen in two of them seen, like, and it's called Duet. Yeah, Duet. Duet of two singers and authors. Um, so they were like very advanced, culturally very advanced, enlightened. 
And uh, at the time when things started to reorganize, the Soviet Union fell apart, a new Russian government was formed. They invited her to head the Minister of Culture, to become a Minister of Culture. So she agreed, and she tried to good, do good things, but at the time when the whole thing fell apart and the whole system didn't work, even the minister could do very little. They didn't have any funding, they didn't have any resources, any control over the situation, right? So, but or whatever they did, she did good, good things. Basically, it was mostly reallocation of government property, which was still formally government property. But, but just with that, they helped culture, they helped, helped uh, society in, in many ways. It was a short period, maybe a year or two, and then uh, the whole system became taken over by the negatives. And a similar situation was, I think, was um, another example I know when uh, my other role model, um, Jim Watson, who was a discoverer of double helix. Uh, in Kennedy's time, John, John F. Kennedy uh, invited him to do some work, kind of plan some work in the government. So Jim Watson was invited. He, the bureaucrats tolerated him maybe for a month or two. But there are some cases when real enlightened people, real smart people, are invited to be like really doing important stuff. <laughs> Uh, and the next time when uh, people remembered him, and next time when the Human Genome Project has started, there was like just a crazy idea, similar to Manhattan Project idea, a crazy idea, how about we just sequence the whole Genome Project, if the government help or helps us. They invited Jim Watson to be, uh, uh, I guess, a, a general, a, a figure behind that project. So again, they invited him, again, they tolerated him maybe for a month or so. And they kind of got rid of him pretty fast because he he stopped his he speaks what he thinks and he thinks really smartly and he in a, in a very critical manner. So he wasn't diplomatic enough to survive in that uh, Shark Tank. But in any way, there are situations when uh, good people, enlightened people, are invited to to contribute to um, to government and. Uh, I know I was interviewed for among my first and on, on the first days of my communication with aliens through channeler Jim. I was invited as a Earth representative to an interview as an Earth representative in uh, I think Arcturian in the Arcturian Consul. And of course, I failed the interview. I uh, I thought they are smart, so I tried to speak to them as smart people, but apparently they were just um, like. Like did like standard question and check marks yes no yes no and um, and when you answer com in in a complex way to a, to a simple question then then you fail obviously next time if they interview me to, to some other console I will give them very simple answers answers yes no yes no yes no um, so yeah our people are invited I know others from our community who are invited. In the spirit, though, in a, in a spiritual sense, to certain consuls, and uh, and we are playing important roles on the spirit level. Hopefully, that will happen to us in the physical as well. We are getting to the place where the four-dimensional, third-dimensional realities will finally intersect in a more visible way, and uh, and there we as hybrids will be invited. Yes, when the fourth and third dimensional realities intersect in a more visible way, the hybrids will be invited, we as hybrids will be invited to participate. So I guess here I can uh, stop and take comments. I was speaking for about 45 minutes. Is anybody here not asleep? <laughs> Alicia, Christine, Ted. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm here. We have big storm rolling in, and so we're we're prepping. <laughs> ah. Oh boy. Yeah. 
Which which state is that? We're in Wisconsin. Where is Wisconsin? It's like near Chicago, right? Wisconsin. Somewhere on the other side of the... I forgot. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Right. Illinois, Wisconsin, somewhere yeah. there, right? Yeah, we, got it. We realized that uh, we had, we're we going to have to replace the roof because we got leaks all over. So porch. On the uh -oh. porch. Not the house, just the porch. <laughs> leaks on the porch. Yeah. yeah. So Sounds sorry, familiar. I, I've been kind of listening, but then I got kind of carried away with, with what was going on. So. Yeah. Okay. I'm off for a while now. We'll see you all guys. All right. <laughs> Yeah, take care of your leaks. It's important. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Have a good night. Good night. Okay. Bye-bye. So, Max, um, let me ask you something. Mm -hmm. What would have happened in Russia during the collapse of the Soviet Union if there had been replicators? If everyone in the, in the, in the country had had access to a replicator, what would have happened? the general populace luckily in Russia there was no weapons the weapons were uh, not popular they were not allowed in, in um, uh, how they say shooting weapons they were not allowed in uh, general population and the army sort of, sort of kept most of the weapons under control many of the weapons some were stolen of course and sold but um, uh, the criminals took over their weapons so if the criminals who had the replicator, they would have much more weapons. So we had much more uh, of uh, criminal activity. And I don't see how with the low culture of population, any good could happen. People would just replicate uh, LSD, I guess, and um, and uh, and drugs and uh, cocaine, I guess. At that time, we didn't have cocaine, so very few people were under cocaine. But if people could replicate cocaine, that would be much worse. So I say I'm very pessimistic about general population, really pessimistic. Uh, they wouldn't replicate anything good. I mean, um, what if they could only replicate food? Oh, if there was food and and uh, basic needs covered. Mm -hmm. um, let me see. So it's only food and basic needs. Of course, that would be great. Yeah, I uh, I experienced. I didn't experience basic needs covered plus freedom. It's either basic needs covered and no freedom, or all the way around. <laughs> there was a beautiful. It was in in all countries a beautiful culture of scientists hired into closed secret military research centers, and there they had everything and. Uh, they were protected from all negative influences and the culture there was amazing of course <clears throat> except you know those who realized that they're making something lethal they sort of had uh, breakdowns like Oppenheimer and um, other honest guys who like on one hand you work on little weapon on another hand you work on little weapon right but um but you know if there is no crime and um, crime is restricted and there is no uh, basic needs covered then people are very relieved and they start uh, I guess having sex and then uh, they start culturally progressing that's kind of typical I think it's um, it's not even Russia it's any country that if you don't have to worry much about basic needs you you start working, what, what, like you just go one step up and worry about other things. Um, socially, I don't know what would happen to society. It's really hard to predict. I never, I never witnessed people being uh, fed and uh, and non-competitive. There is so much inner comp competitiveness, competition in males, in females. They really want to. Even they, if they have everything, they still want to to be right, to organize things in a way they think is right. And uh, there is a lot of, how do you call them, um, career-oriented people, lots of uh, psychopaths, lots of negatives. They wouldn't disappear, right? So if they cannot uh, exploit people in terms of 
food, they would still try to control others. So people would possibly organize and then fight for, for, the, for the power anyway, but when they're not hungry, it's, it's kind of much nicer. Like there are countries like Sweden where there is so much social support. Uh, even America, of, I guess, 90s, it was, it could be like really poor, but there was still some sort of, some sort of basic, I think, I'm not sure. I felt that there was some, there was not that many of people without food. I think there was some, some way, food stamps, I think there were food stamps. So what do people, you know, when people are on food stamps, uh, I don't know. It's, it's really hard for me to imagine something positive, unless you have a positive influence. Unless you have positive influence, if just people are left, left to themselves, I think there is more negatives than positives. I'm pretty pessimistic about the mass in Russia and the mass in America. I, you know, I have experienced them and, and um, you know, they find a way to be, how do you say, to, to, to break things. What do you think? I tend to think that uh, if you told a person you don't have anything to worry about anymore, you, you're you never going to starve, uh, you're never going to be without any of your basic needs, you don't have to go to a job that you don't want to work at, so anything in your dreams, such as being a doctor or engineer or musician those are all open to you now and um, training in those things will be given to you I think it probably would change the general mindset of the population into a creative mode rather than a survival and controlling uh, mode I could be wrong but um, when I've had uh, past life regressions done of my life in the serious sea culture of the Nomo, which are an amphibian race, their society was really set up like that. It was kind of like the Pleiadian societies where... Um, you still have a job, you still have a career, but you're not forced into a into any situation, and no one feels forced in that society to do something that is not part of their their dreams and goals. So you don't have people that are on drugs because, Drugs really are kind of an escapism type of um, action, you know. So it's, I could see how humanity as it is here could certainly change into that scenario, but it would have to be, all the pressure would have to be taken off. And the replicator, the replicator example was, part of that because if you really gave a human a replicator and said you can't rep replicate weapons or drugs or any of those things but your basic needs you can replicate metals you can replicate food you can replicate clothing um, building materials uh, anything you need that's a necessity for life and shelter those things are Here's how you replicate those. And I think it would be a, a rapidly changing society from desperation into um, kind of a bliss. Everyone would be in shock for a while, of course. You would have maybe a decade of, of people literally being in shock and not knowing what to do with themselves. But then you would probably also see a lot of people that said, you know, I was working in a 7-Eleven convenience store and even though I really wanted to be a doctor and now I can do that. You know, I, I'm, I, don't, I don't have any limitations now. I can do anything. 
Thank you. Uh, I, there I was. Think that, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I the, think that would just change all of society. It would take time, but I think it would change all of the, the, the human mindset. I have something to say about it. Let me uh, just I Michelle. First, Michelle wanted to, to speak. What we've already, what different channelers have said is where there's going to be a large amount of people who have um, their, they have too much invested in this doomsday thing. And there's going to be many people who die because of it, you know, either through um, suicide or shooting your neighbor or, you know, the violence uh, that begets violence. And I think that once we go through this phase, there are a lot of people who, like what you said, um, are going to be able to um, do what they want to do. But, you know, I'd like to be a doctor, but heck, I don't have whatever it takes to be a doctor. Can't stand blood, can't stand dead bodies. <laughs> you know, so let's go on to something else. What else would I like to be? A healer. So, but still, there is this personal, internal growth to go through. And that's what all of these things do. You can't have, um, right now we already have, through channeling, people who are more spiritually advanced than us, giving us advice, telling us this, that, and whatever. But it's we who have to come up with these. We can't keep using somebody externally to, to tell us how to fix our lives. We have to, that's the whole, that's the whole purpose of being here on earth. And I think that we've become um, too dependent on some of the advice that we're getting. And I find that in myself too. As much as I point the finger, there's three pointing back at me that tell me, hey, you can't be telling that person that just because <laughs> just because um, they're asking for advice because they've run across their self block, they can't see the forest through the trees, and then they're told, but you're in a desert, you're not in a forest. You know, change your change your uh, imagination. Everything is imagination. Let, let me give Michelle the microphone. She raised her hand. I wanted her to speak. And then we do another round, I guess, of exchange. Can you hear me? Yes, you're good. Oh, thank God you could hear me. Um, okay, I got this new job um, that my brother gave me. It's a janitorial job, but I love to clean because it's a meditative state for me. Same for me. I like I like cleaning. Absolutely. Yeah, so, so the point that I'm getting, are, and since I'm trying to connect with the Lyrans, the Arcturians, and all these other beings, how do I connect with them while using cleaning as a form of meditation? Because while I'm cleaning the, like the public library, for example, I feel like I'm cleaning myself and my baggage. How do I meditate and focus on them while I'm doing this job slash meditation? All right. Uh, have some answer. Anybody? Do you have the answers? I think she's doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the cleaning is your meditation. You even said it. You you gave yourself the answer, and you're saying, okay. "But how am I going to talk to the Yael or whoever you want?" You are the moment. Tech you, her. I want to speak to Tech her because I look okay. at her as a mother figure. So, and the thing is. <laughs> See, this is because I've gone through it. I'm going through it myself. Is I'm looking for something solid to occur. Knock me on my feet. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You're here. I want to see something. I want to see something move in the room. Move something. Move me. See, because we're looking for we're looking for um, an affirmation where the affirmation isn't going to be. You have when you communicate. When you communicate, it's, you have to communicate on their wavelength. Because what that because that's what Tucker and her group are trying to do with me. For example, I was at I came I was going back to my car from the supermarket yesterday, and Tucker and her group were trying to like send me telepathic messages, like like trying to help me with um, 
talking to them telepathically and they're trying to give me certain words and, and so and practicing and because i love to draw they're also trying to teach me psychic drawing as well so yeah. I'm like oh my god what am i gonna do so then you're I'm getting just, your answer what else can you ask for practice i'm trying to practice but I, I get confused because it gets so jumbled and i'm like and because I'm also trying to apply don't, for the alien. Don't worry about, don't, don't don't worry about all that. You're doing it. And look how far you got. Yeah, it's the, you know what it is? It's, it's the silence. It's the silence <laughs> in between blocks of thought. You know, it's, <laughs> when you're in meditation, whether, whether you're cleaning or you're practicing archery, I mean, you can turn anything into a meditative state. But the key is to, to the channeling portion of that meditative state is to have blocks of time where there are no thoughts whatsoever. Yeah, and because I've known I noticed that whenever I'm not focusing on on Tucker's group, I could sometimes see her in my mind's eye, just kind of like observing me, you know, when I'm not like thinking of her, I could feel her and see her in my mind's eye just kind of looking at me seeing that i'm doing okay and kind of being emotionally balanced while doing this new job so i'm like oh okay and that's that but deep down because i'm cleaning a library i'm sort of praying that her and her group can knock a few books down from the shelf and say yo <laughs> you know yeah. like look at me that kind of thing we'll try, you know? uh... ghosts and spirits do that i don't know if <laughs> to court do that I mean, well, nice. because I love to do research. Way, you know, she's way, way out there. She does telepathy. I don't know. She does psycho. What is it? Psychokinesis? Yeah. Yeah. Telekinesis. Yeah. Telekinesis. yeah. Well, well, it's a primary joke. It's a primary joke between me and Tucker because she knew she knows that I just started working on a, in the library. So it's kind of like a in between joke. You know, like, oh, I'm in the library but now. You know, Can you knock down a book? Ha ha. It's like she kind of rolls her eyes at me. Your drawings are, you're communicating. That's why I'm saying, in a sense, you have to communicate the way they can communicate. You're, you're asking, um, your job probably is to learn telepathy, to learn to yeah. channel. What you're doing is, you're jumping to something else. <laughs> I know, so, because um, that's what I'm being told is be to grateful, slow down. Be grateful. Exactly. See, you're getting all the messages. Let me firm. kick you in the booty. <laughs> your you can affirm your intentions too. I mean, there's there's very simple language um, that your higher self is familiar with that cements in what your intentions are for that particular moment, such as saying. I am word through my ability to see and hear spirit through the veil. Word, yeah. I am word through this intention. Word, I am word. So what you're doing is you're claiming yourself as your higher self, as word, as source. And you're saying, this is my intention. And you're saying it with enough authority that you it has no choice but to follow through. You're saying, I am word through my ability to uh, channel messages from all of those at the highest level of vibration available to me. Any low level vibration entities, entities that want to contact me, I'm not interested. I'm interested in the highest level vibration entities available to me and I'm wanting to communicate with you right now. I am word through this intention, word I am word. That's the, that's a very simple affirmation. And I've um, been trying to I've been trying to practice that because I have to admit I have I I lack self confidence, you know, and <laughs> I so lack self confidence one hundred percent. And I, I'm telling you, Tech and the group have been helping me. And with this art project thing, let me tell you, when I try to draw draw Tucker, I got a reptilian coming through, raising her hand, going, me next, me next, me next. I'm like, um, do okay. It. A reptilian. Want to well, see who see, that's, I am? 
that's the point of asking. Are, are, are not bad. Some are bad. Some are good. Some are bad. No, some are good. It's, yeah. It's not, it's not that I'm like, no, I'm not going to draw you. It's just it kind of came as a shock, like. Okay, and then in my mind's eye, I saw Takura kind of giving me these poses along with a reptilian. And I'm like, okay, I'm drawing a duo, all right. So I'm like trying to draw a duo. Of course, all right, my let, let, suck, let me but... contribute too. So, first, reptilians are not all bad. I met wonderful human reptilians, and uh, they are into the service, into the beauty, into the honor. There is a lot of good stuff, good stuff among reptilians as well. Uh, so maybe reptilian would be a step forward, not step backward. It really depends how you feel about them, but don't yeah, be a no, priori. Like slide for you. you know? Well, I was told that I was um, like I told that I was an extraterrestrial, a Larian, Arcturian, and a few other beings in the past life as well as fairies. That's what there I was you told. Go. You know, right. we're all souls. We are all souls. S O U L L S. We're all souls. And if we start looking at um, what their alienness is, or what their being is, or this or that, if we look just at the facial things, then we then we're just back on Earth again, where we're looking at people on their color, we're looking at people on uh, their athletic, on whether they're uh, this, that, or whatever, or if they have a skinny, skinny figure, or all bones, or, or you know what I'm saying? Yes, You're... I do. <laughs> all right. Uh, Looking at the outside and not the inside. Only appearance. because I'm going through that myself. That's why I could say that. Wonderful. You know, oh, it, no. that finger with the three back at me. <laughs> yes. But uh, oh. Even with my arthritic hand, I could do that. <laughs> three back at me. And that, another thought I had was and that. When you do meditations, it's nice to have important, as you said, you want to do research. Do research. Ask questions one at a time. It's not all questions at once, but one at a time. And ask important questions. So, And expect that questions, for me, like usually they come slowly. It takes maybe a day to receive the answer. Not like right away, but like a day or sometimes two days to get the answer. So you meditate, you meditate. Is that why you're multitasking? Yes, because I, 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 I'm forced into it thanks to my mother, you know. So that's why I figured if I could multitask in this human body, I could multitask spiritually while trying to connect with with beings like Takur. I swear to God, I cannot get that for a right. right. You're already conversing with her, so I don't, I don't know why you keep this thing up. This because I don't feel like I am. I don't, I don't feel like I am very much. That's because you're asking, you're demanding something that's concrete. You're asking a 3D reward when you're conversing with 4D and above. How? How's that? I'm... Does that explain it, it makes, easier? It... I know what I want to ask, but I don't know how to say it. <laughs> I don't know what she's I want already, to say. But you know what? In 4D, she's already she's already talking to you in your drawing, your automatic drawing, and things like that. It's it's sort of like when somebody's asking for God to help them, and they tell God exactly the way they want it done. <laughs> how are you going to learn anything? if you get it exactly as you want it when you can't see the big picture like all the people who are going to be affected if you get this done well i kind of see that in my stepfather so i get what you're saying because i see that in my stepfather 100 percent. and when you talk about your stepfather and when you say things about your stepfather i don't like this about him or this or that Remember, you're pointing the finger and there's three back at you. There are attributes in him. And this is all a learning experience. This is to teach you about yourself. It's just that, you know how hard it is to remember that when you're in the midst of the emotional pointing finger? To remember that those, you know, I don't remember it until a little later because somebody pushed my emotional button. 
you know? So in, in order to talk to a four, so in order to talk to a 4D or, or, or in order to talk to a being who's a 4D or higher, I just kind of talk through emotions like. You know what? You like, got to talk to Max on that one. I, I, I just send love to him and hope to and if I talk to them through Jim channeling, they say, oh, yeah, we heard that. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to do other than other than drawing. That's what I'm saying. Other than drawing, because I know cleaning can do just so much, but I just want to, like, do more than just automatic drawing. Or Hey, you can't get to the top of the stairway without hitting the other stairs. You, yeah, I wanted to say the same. You don't have to speak to Takur necessarily. Maybe you need to go through the steps before that. And some spirits are more accessible than like her. She is busy with her stuff. Her and, is very and, busy. I don't know how she could visit so doggone many people. And another point is that, you know, the aliens really have hard time being interested in our problems. They yeah. think on a, on the level of not even governments, not even uh, society. They think on level of level of planets and uh, planet system and galaxies, star system. That's their level of, you know, so of interest. Her, so should I leave them alone? Am what? I bugging them that much? Um, I, 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 um, I send out the invitation and give them time to respond. And I feel if they respond, and then, and then I send another invitation. On some days, I'm kind of, what's that word? Um, polygamous or was it uh, there is miscule that was promiscuous and I send lots of invitations to lots of people but I think it's it's not good so <laughs> <laughs> so you possibly want to like there focus on one <laughs> focus on one and and kind of establish that channel and wait for them to respond but then if it doesn't if you don't feel it's coming focus on another one I see from Max's heart these little bolts of light Right. Zoom, 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 zoom. All right. If you're not answering right about it, let's let's call another one. Right. Like now we speak to Jesus. Right. <laughs> they all answer at the same time, Max. Right. Your head is going to be like that back symbol in your behind you. <laughs> but basically, you have to tune in into the, their level of thinking. If you want to talk to Tukur, think about the the human race and survival of human race and the planet. That's the the level of thinking. And that with those questions is a uh, address to her. And uh, with a uh, simpler question, maybe Lakesh would be best. Lakesh is like kind of simpler guy. We can't expect them to lower themselves to um, 3D. 3D is, if you talk to a lot of uh, people who have passed over, they'll tell you 3D was heavy. <laughs> Because yeah, I don't, I don't want anybody to get mad at me. That's the thing. I don't want. No, no, no! Don't get mad. They just uh, the connection is not don't. as strong. They don't. They don't take it personally. That's part of three D. It's like you go to uh, a child care and there are cute little babies. Are you getting getting upset at them if they ask wrong questions? Like they they say, you know, let me show how I pooped, and uh, you know that's that, that's their level, right? <laughs> So uh, another idea was um, books are great. Um, put your hand on a book and try to suck in the important information that kind of relate to the author than another book. And if you, if you ask a question and a way to get the answer is meditate, pick the book from the shelf, open a random page and read the answer here. You know, that's the perfect way to deal with, to interface with the library. Max, I've slept on books on astrology. I do the same, yeah. Yep. And nothing. Nothing? My higher self might know, but it hasn't been told to me yet. <laughs> I just uh, want maybe. To I, I did that with math when I was in college. I tried to do that with math and like algebra, did it work? geometry. Forget it. I can't do it. I, I can. I, I, I uh, that's how I read books. I just kind of have them with me for a while and then I kind of suck it in. Not everything, but you know, the, the, the key ideas. And I flip yeah, through the book like... back and forth and I kind of get get all books at once, not not from the beginning to the end. You know what, Theos, I think it was Theos who told me, because I was saying, I have a problem with languages. I, I only know English. I can't learn Portuguese, my father's language. Can't learn French. 
my mother's language. I can't pick up any Spanish, nothing. I forget the words the next time we come in. So I think that the suggestion was you have to live the language. Uh -huh. Yep, I remember that. Jump in the book. I did with song, that's what I do with sign language because I learned it in high school <laughs> and I didn't become hard of hearing until I was in my 20s. So I sign language came naturally because I wear my heart on my sleeve. I was able to project sign on uh, my emotions and Reiki through sign language. Uh, and I used to volunteer I like you, Reiki. and I used to produce Reiki th for the masses through sign language. So uh, uh, wow. I like doing that in my um, Reiki crystal grids for um, different things that are happening around Earth. And I like to do it um, for the horses that I uh, see almost daily and the donkeys. Yeah. They're so solid. They are. But they're anyway. so beautiful too. And then I was told I have to start doing uh, working with people. <laughs> ah, interesting. Yeah. Oh. I live out in the country and my and there's like a farmer that's near my house who owns like this company that brings in herds of of ponies for different oh. people and they're they're shatland ponies shetland? Shat yeah yeah cute. But my my stepfather has a joke he calls them shitland ponies because they shit all over the land all right on this wonderful so topic uh, like? let's let's come back to the question we, which we discussed um so the question is if humans were given replicators um what, what else is needed to to make it work and, uh, that's, making, that's making life too easy. Why don't they learn how to grow? Grow uh, their own food. <laughs> let, let me just uh, bring a couple of examples. Um, like we were looking at, you know, when we were choosing, the Soviet Union was choosing between the communism socialist system with the uh, government owning everything and distributing to people and uh, the and the capitalist system of free market, we paid attention to the two major examples. One was South Korea, where uh, basically the West was dictating the, their um, economy. They, they created the economy, basically created the under control of the West that was created the economy. And South Korea did really well with that. So what is needed is the somebody from outside to come and control the country preventing it from investing its resources into military actions in the military military development but then and, how can they grow and the second country was uh japan the same thing japan lost in the war was completely destroyed and it was one of the fastest growth because again the country wasn't allowed to invest in military and another country, a third example was East Germany, West Germany. East Germany was under control of Russians, and it did okay, but kind of went downhill. And the West Germany was under control of the Americans French and, and French, yeah, the Westerns, and it did really well in terms of economy. So, so we looked at that, and it was clear example that Soviet system, for some reason, fails in, at least in that level compared to the western system in terms of economy but these countries which were prevented from doing investing them into the military were doing actually better growing faster than other countries so i guess whatever you give to people you have to basically uh, make sure they don't uh, start fighting and do the military stuff do their usual human stuff like create an army, create the weapons. If that is prohibited somehow, then humans, I think, will be doing okay. They can take care of the police and uh, uh, safety, local safety, but somehow the humans tend to fight over whatever, over the, the territory and create armies and fight each other. So that... Not, not all. Hmm? Not all. Not all. I... I, I... The reason why we came here is to learn to work with things like that. But if we're told by somebody more superior than us that um, you have to do it this way, well, that's not the soul growth that we're getting here. 
the whole idea is for us to learn. Look, America, believe it or not, to me, there are more spiritually advanced people than the idiots who the media is portraying. There are more spiritual people. There are more people. So there is soul growth growing. And I, and I think that, <laughs> I think if you eliminate all these other things, um, how are we going to, how are we going to learn to withstand temptation is what I'm trying to get at. You have to go through the temptation. You put a large, um, you give me a large amount of money to manage. And I'm going to find ways to uh, take a few myself. I know that. So I don't want to manage anybody's money <laughs> but my own. You know, you know what I'm saying? But the only way I'm going to learn to strengthen myself and not taking something from somebody else is by occasionally being um, uh, tempted. So the main question which you raised as well is, is the Earth the failed experiment? Is the no. human race flawed in, the, in its design? We sort of are very energetic. We have wonderful sex and uh, wonderful uh, ability to create uh, a lot of drama on a small amount of territory. But, but with all of that, we are so suicidal. Is it, you know, are we going to grow, grow up or not? I'm pretty pessimistic. I think if people are, you know, even if you remove all alien influence, all the cabal, the, the, the masses, I believe, would recreate the cabal right away, you know, especially the, the, the other countries, like non-Western countries. They are so still playing medieval games. They would create dictatorships and recreate the cabal right away. And I don't see any way to, to do it from ground up. If you give people just, you know, just food, I think they will build the, the old the old earth again. I think to, top down is more like enlightened people if they come somehow come together and build a structure from from high level down. I think that that might work. I'm more like towards enlightened right. enlightened uh, uh, social design from the top level, from middle middle top level rather than from the bottom up. I don't really believe in uh, dark masses that they it's, can. It's true that in in sociology or in um, psychology, one of those, um, the belief to change the atmosphere of a company, you need to get rid of all the top level people, mm -hmm. all the way down to middle management. And yeah, middle yes, okay, but but not to janitors. Janitors cannot build the the company. <laughs> God, really? Oh. You have to bring this one up. Thank you very much. I'm right here listening, man. I'm right here. Or why did they take this you. example? I'm sorry. But, I, but it was right on hand. I just grabbed it. <laughs> I'm like right here on the freaking spotlight. <laughs> Maybe, you me, yeah. It's so bad about the pony comment that you had to bring that one up. Ah, uh, gosh. So bad. <laughs> How about we, 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 we name you exception? Yeah. You you will be entitled to, to, to lead the company. How about that? <laughs> I can do so. Small communities are what, what's going to make it. Right. You know, like, um, and I think that that's one of the things that they were discussing on um, what does it look like in the future? Well, what, what's going to happen is small communities are going to be able to survive because small groups of people work better than huge cities. Right. Yeah. In, in Russia, it was a huge sentiment then. We had so big central government. It was like more scary than America. America has states. In Russia, it was huge territory governed by one person and uh, another 10 people around him. It was just complete nonsense. I think if you build cities and then have farmland and open land or small cities, towns, whatever, but have them, each of them surrounded, meaning make them self-sustaining. Right. And prevent them from fighting to each other. Ted, you wanted to say something. Well, I mean, the plan for the last 30 years that I've known of is that and it's
that's already happening now is that there's small communities of like-minded individuals like all of us that are starting communities. Exactly. And those communities were promised by all of the species that we've had contact with that those small communities starting with individuals and then the community itself would be the ones that would have first contact with some of these different species. We would be shown different ways of living, not forced into any different way of living, but shown how some of these other societies like the Lyrans, like the Pleiadians, like the Nomo, like some of these other these other more advanced societies, how they live and how they come to a consensus as a global society with with telepathy. See, once once you have telepathy, which is being developed now within this 3D reality, you lose the desire or, or even requirement of politics. Um, you know, most of what we know as dirty politics goes away. You don't have a society that needs uh, court systems and police because if you know everyone else's thoughts, there's no way to lie to anybody anymore. It's, it's, there's, according to Kerr, there's three levels of thoughts, and it's what we're talking about, the level that um, others can um, read is the first level. Exactly. So once you have a, a small community of like-minded people that are being trained not only in telepathy but other, other dormant um, facilities that we've had, um, you have contact with these other societies and some of these concepts that, that are gathered from these more advanced civilizations get to permeate out from these small communities into the rest of the culture and you have the second element which is critical which is the replicators <laughs> then there, there really is no there is no way to have long-term monetary systems in place they fall apart because nothing is worth anything anymore a loaf of bread comes out of a a replicator and it costs you nothing if you try to sell it to someone else they just laugh at you they say well wait a second I've got a replicator or access to a replicator just like you do I don't need to buy your loaf of bread I can go replicate my own you know so does that mean does that mean that the money system will go down the drain like no money more system, money well money system goes bye-bye I mean even even something that can't come out of a replicator directly can still be produced uh, cheaply so it's just like being able to 3d print your own car and say well this week I want to I want to drive a car um, you know that I don't currently have well I mean it's the same same scenario the second technology that they've promised for decades now the second technology after the replicators is going to be um, gravity control propulsion systems so you have a vehicle that doesn't use any fuel that can travel literally around the globe on the energy lines of the planet the electromagnetic <laughs> grids of the planet and uh, then you do away with the petroleum industry entirely not not even not even the petroleum industry after the monetary system has collapsed you, you do away with the petroleum industry entirely because there's no need to use that fuel source anymore. So those two technologies alone would, in a non-forceful way, change all of society. Um, you know, just, just those alone. Not, not even mentioning the learning that's already happening and, and occurring with people being shown other ways of making of, a living uh, building, building a civilization <clears throat> all right i think I, I i think i need to to start wrapping up because of my time and your time oh, thank you ted I, I really like what you said yes the the technologies 
Yeah, with the, with the technologies, it's much less hopeless. <laughs> but you know, we need somehow to to restrict the the cabal of you know just trying to kill the kill the, uh, the civilization. That sort of old-fashioned uh, financial system with um, with military on the top, I think, is is sort of the, the key. If we have still the military, it doesn't make any sense. Well, right, and you've got an argument here of nature versus nurture, which, you know, it, it's a, it's clearly a scenario where humans always tend up degrading into a dic dictatorial position, you know, where an entire society, even though communism itself is a good theory, Marxism is a good theory, it always ends up in a dictatorship. And right. Yeah. You have to break away from that human mindset in order to change the world. But I, I don't think it's as far away as you think. I think it's literally flipping a few switches changes the whole <laughs> the whole scenario. If that sounds crazy. Uh huh. Um. Yeah. You know. I hope that they have a plan. <laughs> Well, it's going to prove interesting. When is the next World um, Council meeting? Because it's going to prove interesting to see what uh, Mr. Trump, President Trump does. <laughs> oh, well, we have until September 23rd, I think. September. You know, okay. September 23rd is becoming a, a probability at this point across multiple minds not only financial minds there's a lot of people saying that the when the bond market uh gets uh there's there's bonds get called in on this on in september um they're saying that there's possibility of a, of a financial collapse uh -huh. um, at that point they're saying that probably um trump would need to uh stand down or something along those lines around Not that period ego. of time. No, he's all ego. Well, I know, but when you're forced, he's going to be forced, I think, to to step down uh, eventually. I mean, that was his whole plan, according to multiple channels over the past um, Yeah, I didn't... He, yeah, he did that for a lark, and then, boy, did it backfire on him. And now he's making it so that um, people do kick him out. That's true. He's doing whatever he wants, and while he's at it, and getting into the point where he does get kicked out because he doesn't care no more than Sarah Palin cared about being no longer the governor or whatever well, she was in Alaska. Nobody cares when you when you put your faith in politicians, which is what the Galactics are trying to teach us. You put your faith in politicians, you're always going to be disappointed. It doesn't matter which aisle you're coming from; mm -hmm. they're all on the take. I mean, they're all up to some sort of control process. That's because that's because that's how they survive. That's the survive. That's the world of politics. We just need to change it by making it so that people don't have long terms. Um, when you go into politics, you should only be able to go for so many years, and that's it. I mean, my, pr my prediction is we won't survive as a species even another 10, 15, 20 years if we so have. What? political system in in place so what we're a soul we don't disappear we don't we go somewhere else so what so what if yeah. the human see we pretty too much on ego into this human form well for that matter i want to look like an athlete i want to I want to look like an athlete, doggone it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all with the six pack, with the, uh... oh my God. But the, th the thing is, is <coughs> this is just a, this is just a body. It's just a shell. It's just yeah. a, it's a biomechanical suit is what it is. <coughs> and that was something to sneeze about. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Yeah. But you, you see what I'm saying, though, is that so many people are frightened, but they're frightened because they're being told, but then the human species will be gone. So what? 
All right, let's uh, let's start wrapping up. I do you have any ideas how to wrap up? I don't have a oh. good uh, way of wrapping up the webinar, I which do, is kind I of. Do, I do. Okay, I do. go ahead. I want to say thank you for. I want to thank all of you for giving me the pointers needed for, um, rah, rah. for understanding that I'm meant to do what I'm supposed to do, which is to clean up myself and to have that better understanding and just go with the flow of things. So Super. I want to thank you all for that. Thank you, but, Michelle, for asking for, for advice. And it was a very helpful discussion. It was interesting. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, Christian, your, your word. Uh, final final uh, closing speech. Okay. Life is fun. If we keep worrying about what might come to be, we don't know because there's too many people involved. And even the um, the uh, aliens, I, I wish I could call them something else besides aliens, but even these blessed people above us, these good people above us, you know, they don't really know what the outcome is going to be. They'll always tell you, this this is what it looks like, but look, what, look how we surprised them at... Um, raising the our ascension level so quickly look at how we surprised everyone by um working on that problem that they're having with the timeline and all this other stuff so to me we really not as humans but as a soul as creative doggone souls connected to the all the universe let's have some fun man <laughs> yay thank you Anya, do you want to say something? There is Anya there. We have a couple minutes to close uh, for the closing of the of the webinar. You on mute? If you want to speak, you have to unmute yourself. Oh, I can unmute. Hold, hold on, I'm unmuting you. Do you want to say something? Hey, hi guys. Hey, hey we can hear you. Hi guys. I left you some meditation. I think it's very important. Um, I left you some videos, but I think that we all just have to start from inside of each and one of us. Um, I'm going to just end right there. Check on Cupola on a not private group. It's really awesome meditation. I think you're all going to enjoy it. This is for the contact of extraterrestrials. Let's just focus on that. Thank you, Max, so much for everything you do. Yay, thank you. Thank you for your... Um final words nice nice words for the closing and uh ted what, what do you want to say oh i was just gonna thank you for for the talk that was that was great any more uh, final thoughts thank you that's all that's it, that's it. all right that's it. um i just wanted to invite everybody to prepare for the change and I pr propose just do as I do, do webinars, do your YouTube channel, do your creative writing, um, channel your own message, the message which you have to deliver to humanity and uh, publish it in all possible ways, through Facebook, through blog, through YouTube, through friends, through local friends, give away the have the message first develop it develop your message and uh, be ready to deliver it 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 is very likely it will be needed soon it is very likely I, each of you can i send some art pieces to you the facebook page yes what can i send some of my sketches onto the facebook page yeah i will i, I sent you already the link to our pay, facebook group which is hucola one private yeah. free private group hucola one group on, on facebook okay. post it there awesome. yeah. all right so broadcast have your message and channel it and publish it that's the and number one and second network connect one on one have relationships with light workers just knock on their skype knock on their messenger knock on their sms telephone know people faces names and lots of us we are open to connect one-on-one -on -one. so connect to each other it's very important to have this connection and strengthen it and expand it it's uh, it's really important it will be useful that's all i had to say thank you goodbye uh, i'm closing you. down good night, Max. Good night. night. see you next time in the same time 11 p.m thursday Max speaking for himself on the same 
uh, hucola.org, click on jump, and there is an invitation there, participation link. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye.